So today we're going to discuss a relatively exciting discovery in regards to black holes. But before I talk about why it's exciting, let's actually talk about what we know about black holes so far. Or to be more specific, why there is this unusual mystery of intermediate mass black holes. Black holes that are not big enough to be central black holes in various galaxies, but also black holes that are massive enough not to be considered to be stellar mass black holes, or essentially the ones produced by various supernova. And while to date, pretty much the majority of everything we've discovered has either been a stellar black hole, very often discovered as a result of its interaction with something around it, or even as a result of a collision, or a supermassive black hole that produces various effects in centers of various galaxies. But the scientists have always believed that there has to be something in between them, with a mass of over a hundred solar masses, but less than several hundred thousand. And these types of black holes have always been referred to as IMBH, Intermediate Mass Black Hole. But in the last few years, pretty much most of the evidence so far has been kind of circumstantial. There have been some signs here and there, and you can learn about some of these previous discoveries in several videos in the description below, but for the most part, we've never really had any conclusive evidence that intermediate mass black holes exist. Which by itself is kind of weird, because we have millions of discovered supermassive black holes, lots and lots of different stellar mass black holes, but just a handful of potential hints for intermediate mass black holes. And so yeah, something here doesn't make sense. But that's until this relatively recent study that basically took like 20 years or even longer to finally get extremely solid evidence out of a very famous globular cluster. The one that you see right here known as Omega Centauri. And it's actually always been believed that inside of these clusters there has to be something. Something massive enough to basically keep everything together. But the evidence was just not there until now. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss this first ever confirmation that intermediate mass black holes do indeed exist, and one of them, with a mass of 8200 solar masses, seems to be in the middle of Omega Centauri. Although first, a quick clarification. When it comes to global clusters, they actually are full of mysteries by themselves. And you can learn about some of these mysteries in one of the videos in the description. And Omega Centauri is probably one of the most mysterious global clusters in the entire galaxy. Here's roughly where it's located compared to the rest of the galaxy, and if you were to look at it from planet Earth, it would be visible somewhere in the constellation of Centaurus. But interestingly, even though it's about 17,000 light years away from us, it's actually pretty big, 150 light years across, or in terms of physical size, it's about the same size as the moon in the night skies. And here you can actually find approximately 10 million various stars, with the overall mass of the cluster being about 4 million solar masses, which makes it the most massive global cluster, or really any cluster, in the entire galaxy. As a matter of fact, the only thing that's even more massive is the other mysterious cluster known as Mayal 2 in the nearby Andromeda galaxy. But that's basically a mystery of its own, and we'll discuss this in some of the future videos. Subscribe and stuff. And so because it's so large, so massive and has so many stars, it's technically visible to the naked eye. But you have to be in a relatively dark location in order to see it. And because it's so easily visible, it's been known to the ancients for a very long time. Although first it was officially classified by the famous Edmund Haley back in 1677. And here's a small fun fact slash side note. One of the closest stars to planet Earth, the Captain's star that we've discussed in one of the videos in the description, a star that's about 12 light years away from planet Earth, seems to have actually escaped this cluster long time ago. Now this is based on the analysis of its properties compared to the properties of stars in the cluster, and they seem to be surprisingly similar. Many of the stars in this cluster seem to be about 12 billion years old, and quite a few of them have actually been disrupted over time to escape into the rest of the galaxy. Which basically suggests that Omega Centauri, like many other global clusters, seems to be the ancient core of some kind of a dwarf galaxy. A galaxy that was disrupted by the Milky Way, possibly about 12 billion years ago, to eventually become a kind of a permanent orbital object moving around the Milky Way in a somewhat eccentric orbit. Once again, here's roughly where it's located compared to the disk of the Milky Way. But because this is so massive and so large, 
It also obviously contains way more stars than any other known cluster. And as you move toward the center, the overall density of stars increases even more. And so here, very close to the center, most of the stars seem to be only 0.1 light years away from one another, moving around each other with the overall velocity of about 8 kilometers per second. But what makes this cluster a little bit different from others is the fact that some of the stars here seem to have formed at different time periods. So basically some of them are actually a little bit younger, and some of them are also a little bit brighter. Here if you look closer you'll notice that there are quite a few blue stars that seem to be just a little bit easier visible than other stars. You can also see these stars in the actual image taken by the La Silla Observatory. And so as a result it kind of becomes easier to measure how stars move inside the cluster and thus work out the overall mass distribution, potentially discovering if there's basically something hiding inside. And so over a decade ago, back in 2008, one of the first studies using the Hubble Space Telescope presented first evidence for the existence of some kind of a central object inside this cluster and it was assumed to be an intermediate mass black hole. Here this was done by showing that many different stars seem to bunch up near the center with the gradual increase of starlight the closer to the center you get, with some of the stars also showing increasing velocity as they got closer and closer to the center, which led the scientists to conclude that this was maybe signs of an intermediate mass black hole right in the middle, with a mass of possibly 40,000 solar masses. But because the evidence here was not really that strong, and because the motion of the stars could be explained in some other way, here's actually the projection of the motion for some of these stars, this was not widely accepted and as a matter of fact most scientists believed that there was another explanation. As a matter of fact because no additional emissions have been seen from this region and no signs of X-rays or any other black hole activity taken together all of these additional observations led to alternative explanations. And so this was basically widely disputed. And it was disputed for the past 16 years. And it was really the most recent observations that finally were able to put this to rest. With the actual conclusions being made in a very similar way to how scientists were able to confirm the existence of Sagittarius A star, the essential black hole in the middle of the Milky Way. Now one of the main ways it was proven to exist was by essentially observing unusual motions of several stars around an invisible dense point somewhere in the center. And because many of these stars were moving at very high velocities, there was practically no way to explain this without some kind of a dense massive object. So here it had to be a massive black hole. And even though there were no additional emissions discovered here at first, today we're pretty certain that there is a black hole because these emissions have been discovered in the last decade. We even have an actual image. And so something very very similar was now done here. By looking right at the core of this cluster, pretty much ignoring millions of other stars, scientists behind this recent study you can find in a description were able to finally identify not one, not two, but seven fast moving stars in the innermost region of Omega Centauri, with the likely location of the black hole visible right here. And they were able to achieve this by looking at over 500 different images from the Hubble Space Telescope with these images taken over 20 years, which in the process allowed them to simulate the overall motion of these stars, discovering that some of these stars, very bright stars in the middle, were moving just a little bit too fast for any of this to be basically normal. And so by discovering these fast moving stars, almost in the center of the Omega Centauri, they essentially discovered the most likely location for the intermediate mass black hole. The black hole that seems to be 8200 solar masses, because that's the only way these stars would move that fast around a central point. And this was achieved by looking at velocities of 1.4 million additional stars in the star catalog from the Hubble Space Telescope. And so out of these 1.4 million stars, seven really stood out. And all seven were in a very similar location. And well, by chance this is extremely unlikely to happen. I mean, if this was just like one or two stars, there could have been some other explanations. But here, seven stars, that's definitely something in the middle. But because the mass of this black hole is not as massive as initially thought, it essentially implies that this cluster represents a kind of a time frame literally frozen in time. Or basically this was a remnant of a galactic core that never really got to expand or collide with other galaxies, leaving this galactic core unaffected by anything else for billions and billions of years. 
which essentially prevented this black hole from growing larger and from becoming more massive, which at the same time presents us with that missing link. The link between supermassive black holes and the stellar mass black holes we usually find after various supernova. But the other reason why this particular discovery is actually kind of exciting is for that famous telescope known as EHT, Event Horizon Telescope. The one that was responsible for the picture of M87 and of course Sagittarius A star. Because this black hole is so much less massive, the motion around this black hole and the overall activity around it is actually much much lower than around Sagittarius A star. In terms of time scales, it's at least 10 times slower. And that basically suggests that this now makes it a perfect target for EHT to potentially take another picture of another black hole right here in the Milky Way galaxy, potentially revealing something we've never seen before and discovering details about these black holes that could never be possible otherwise. And though this would probably take at least a few years, I think at this point this is probably the best possible next target. And so chances are, in the next few years, we might get an actual picture from here showing us what this unusual black hole looks like. But I guess until then, or until future discoveries from this region, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. When it comes to black holes, this is definitely a really important confirmation and it will most likely lead to additional discoveries in the next few years. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining general membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.